anyway. Uh, we've got our episode of Inside Stars in here. It's called A Cut Above. Hmm, what are we going to talk about here? Are we going to talk about a ship called a Cutter, perhaps? That we've, that we've talked about uh, on various Discord channels? Well, let's have a look right now, shall we? There it is, a cut above that That's is not... <laughs> I, I like when we see the starter ship, they talk about starships, and we see a Merlin here. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, the Merlin which is pretty much uh, useless if you don't have a motor ship, obviously. So the starter ship is a player's first entry into the game that gives them that little taste of what the game can do. Yes. It should be relatively simple, straightforward, easy to fly. Yeah, it should be like well, a jack-of-all-trade, you know? It should be able to do everything but at the same time not a lot of everything but as but still everything uh, possible right that, that it's it's basically the school of star citizen the type of ship that teaches you how to do the various activities in the verse you gotta do basic bounty hunting basic trading basic delivery basic exploration and then as you get better you start to rent other ships uh, bigger ships make more money and then make your way up with uh, extra and assets should provide access to as many different game loops as possible they matter in the overall scheme things because everyone has to start somewhere so why not start with uh, a little ship that can do a little bit of most things acceptably well to get you ready for the bigger universe that's basically the whole purpose of a starter ship that we saw a couple of those we saw the pisces which is which actually in my opinion is the one that flies the best uh some aurora as well that we are going to heavily feature in the future in uh, Star Citizen Wars, and uh, I think that we saw also the 100 series, which is my least favorite starship. Even if you had every ship in the game, starships still have a purpose in that yes, they do. sometimes you don't want to risk your big value ships or vehicles. Well, absolutely! Absolutely. You know, sometimes you just want to go from A to B. You know, just go from A to B. You don't want to be way risking your, not even even your Cutlass or your Corsair now that it's out, right? Or some of, you know, your Mercury Star. Now. And why do you want to do that is because you may know that perhaps you're going to be destroyed. And when you are destroyed and you want to be using the ship that you would have used otherwise, then uh, you need to claim your ship. There's a timer. It takes time. But if you use a starter ship instead, well, you know, it's kind of disposable. So it's okay if it gets destroyed. Plus, a starter ship usually takes a very short time to also get claimed. So you don't need to wait for 5 or 10 minutes. Uh, it's usually instantaneous. Or you have to wait for a few seconds. Or if... And if you don't want to wait for a few seconds and you want to get it now, right? You pay that insurance uh, expedite fee. It's just a couple of hundred bucks in the game. So that's actually okay. And that's another purpose here for uh, the starter ship. See, it's a great way to just you know, go from point A to point B as quickly as possible. Multiplayer or like finding people to play with isn't always like that evident. Um, and you might just feel like playing for an hour or so. And then a starter ship is perfect because you don't have to have a whole team to man it. They're also fun yeah. when you're doing something like a Zero to Hero run. To yeah, get there we go. This guy knows what we're way. talking about. Zero, zero to, hero to Hero is when people start out with one of the basic ships and try and work their way up using only in-game loops and in-game currency to buy one of the larger ships for a certain goal they set themselves. Absolutely. And there's just nothing like, you know, after you run, you've been... You've been doing zero to hero for a week or two. You're finally going to be buying, you know, a bigger ship. You're maybe a constellation, for example. You're going to the new deal at Lorville, and you got the, the vendors like, oh, good was that feel in the, the ways. It, it's just so hilarious, right? I, I personally that. enjoy doing that sometimes because it gives you a new perspective on the game. When you first came into the game, maybe it was five, six, seven years ago. The experience then is different to the experience now, so it gives you that reset and sort of. Relearn yeah, the, it, it forces you to really play the game, right? Hell of a good decision. I love this guy. I love this actor. It's so awesome. We they need to use. I think that he also made the the Starlifter commercial as well. They need to use it. Developed more. back before our game loops really became a proper thing, and that means that we're in a really good position at the moment to introduce a modern starter ship that is set up to work with our modern game loops. And that's where the Drake Cutter comes in. There we go. All right. Okay. So, okay. I, you know, I've, I've seen those pictures of the Cutter on, you know, the, the Leaks Discord channel. And the, obviously, you know, pictures were leaked about the Cutter. And I was really wondering what this ship 
Goku before. I, I was looking at that. It looked like it looks like a fish, you know. It looks like the, the fish I have in my fish tank. So I was really wondering, you know, what is this ship going to be for? Is this another Herald, you know? Uh, and it's a starter ship, of course. Makes sense. The Drake Cutter it looks very is bulky. Drake's entry into the starter ship market. It provides a well-rounded experience for uh, one person uh, to just go take on all that the verse can offer. It's a ship that is very straightforward in the way that it's designed. It's designed to get a starter player from A to B as safely as possible. That's that's what a starter ship does, right? It looks like that's. Uh, <laughs> I like I like how they say, "Oh yeah, we are designing this ship to be to take you from A to to B as safely as possible." And yet they are doing a bounty hunting mission at the same time, right? <laughs> it's not really the safest way possible. It looks like it is armed. Let's have a look at the weapons here. It has two. It only has, and that is very surprising even for a Drake ship, it only has two basic laser repeaters and that is basically it. I hope that it has some variants with, just like the Aurora, for example, the Aurora has a variant that can that allow you to put more laser repeaters, you can put up to four. Uh, two is not really going to be allowing you to do much bounty hunting, unless you are, of course, an exceptional pilot, but it's not going to be... Um, it's not going to be the core of this ship. Plus, it doesn't look like it's it's uh, fantastic at uh, flying or not very maneuverable as well. well it's very bulky. They're starting gameplay loops. I mean, yeah, cool. You, can destroy, uh, uh, you can destroy a, a basic Mustang. Of the ship and how it's built. It's not really aerodynamic. It's very bolted on and like put together out of like different kinds of metals and like some are more rusty than others. It's using the Vulture VTOLs. It's also using now the Vulture VTOLs. Now that is very interesting because I didn't know the Vulture had VTOLs. Um, you guys know that? In the, please let me know in the comment section down below if you guys knew that the, the Vulture had VTOLs. I had no idea. That Drake signature cladding and paneling that's like bolted on top. Yeah, that's awesome. That's it's really the signature of Drake, and that is what makes those Drake ships so attractive, right? You just see all the panels. It's just yeah, that that really cool you know design that that looks so rusty at the same time functional but robust and slightly janky looking <laughs> slightly <laughs> basically uh, that's where people would say uh, what a piece of junk you know that's what they would think when they would see that but again it's trick and that's the whole purpose of the starter ships is choose to to make you feel like playing the game so that you can get something a little bit better right because those starships those starships they can't be expensive they can be expensive, they can be, you know, for those of you who don't know Star Citizen so much, they can be worth, you know, $100, $200, right? A starter ship is really what gets you the first experience in the game at $35 for some of the cheapest, you know, $35, $40, $45. I think my favorite part of it is actually the way that it flies. It's got big engines, but quite small maneuvering thrusters. So that means it's great at going straight, just like the Herald, and that's basically it. Yeah, that's what I said. It's not going to be very maneuverable, right? So it's going to be a great ship for delivery missions or small-scale cargo, but that's that's basically good. Which means that it's relatively fast in a straight line, but as soon as you start trying to turn, you really begin to feel the weight of the ship because it's quite a heavy ship for a starter. Oh, there are the snake pits trying to do the race. <laughs> that's and fun. I think as most of the time that you spend in your ship, you'll be flying it. I think it's very important that we get that sort of thing right. It has a large, a relatively large interior, the largest of any starter ship. Now that's actually a plus, because some of those starter ships can be cramped. You guys know the Aurora, uh, extremely cramped. Basically, you can basically fit a couple of delivery boxes. There's your bed, and that's basically it, right? Uh, the 100 uh, series is actually quite uh, voluminous in the inside, but you don't have much cargo uh, as well. So it's kind of a trade-off here. I guess it's going to be turning off its power, fire power that it doesn't really need so much because of its low maneuverability for more interior Everything space. Everything is quite tactile on the inside. There's lots of levers and clunky buttons rather than holographic displays. You don't have uh, the finer cladding on the inside that other manufacturers would do. It's all exposed insulation and pipe work just to give it that uh, no frills spared uh, experience. As the ramp lowers, you're greeted by the cargo hold. This there you go, classic Drake ramp here. Now, I really wonder if we can actually put a vehicle inside. Uh, maybe not a uh, a cyclone, right? That would be a little bit overkill. But if we have enough room to put like a, a, a hover quad or maybe a dragonfly, 
Then again, uh, that could make this ship uh, quite attractive as well compared to other starter ships, which you cannot really put so many, so many things inside. And this would give access to some missions like bunker missions. You know, sometimes you do those bunker missions, the turrets are shooting at you, you have to uh, sit, uh, you, you have to land your ship, you know, a kilometer away from the bunker. Now, if you do have a ground vehicle, you can get to that bunker much faster. So would that be possible with a cutter? It looks like it can fit one of those, at least an STV for sure. This is where most of the components live in that component base. Uh, and this is also where cargo is stored. Okay. Uh, it only has four SCU of cargo. It looks, looks like it's only four SCU. Which, uh, just like a normal run. You have a door at the back of exists. the cargo area that leads you through into the hub, which is where the basic amenities that uh, the cutter comes with are. You have your little bathroom. I mean, it looks very comfortable compared to what you see in other starter ships. Nice, nice, a nice bathroom here. Faucets there as well. There's uh, your toilet. With a little reading light. Cool. <laughs> Star Citizen level of detail here. Locker and some shelving. And then through on the other side of the hab is the cockpit, uh, which is where the last two components live, the pilot seat and dashboard. Okay, and what about this? Oh, that's where they have a little bit more components, I suppose. There you put some weapons, and there is the pilot seat. Classic takes you a little bit uh, above here. There's a little rail that, there you go, takes you up there. And this is where you have the view. Some struts here, no, nothing too, uh, the thing I like that's, about the nothing that's the blocking the way too much. Just how evolved it is compared to some of the other starter ships. It has a cockpit with a really tactile experience in it. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> Tactile experience. It has onboard living quarters and storage, as well as an actual cargo bay that you can fit cargo and uh, larger things in. So it gives you lots of variety. By the way, what we are looking at here is one of the brand new derelict outposts that's coming up that looks like it is Hurston here. So a little preview here of what's coming up with Star Citizen 3.18. Uh, nice little Easter egg here, CIG. See what you can do with it. The Drake Cutter is for everyone. It's a simple starter ship that everyone will be able to find a use for. You know what? I, I don't disagree with that. Uh, probably I would not be using it for combat, obviously. But uh, if it can fly well, if it can go fast, you know, from point A to point B for delivery missions, if we can put a small ground vehicle like an STV, for example, or PTV, then yeah, I would see myself using a cutter, absolutely. In every fleet, there is a use for a small, tough, relatively fast ship. Now, I would not associate to tough starters, with Drake, but... I think you know. a lot of it comes down to personal preference on looks. It's quite a, a cool looking ship. It's got a bunch of little cool features. Like I love the little slidey armor windows. Now, what is this going to be for? <laughs> Why would there be a little, uh, a little armor here on the side? That's so funny. Now, perhaps if you're flying uh, and you know, the sun is very bright on the side, you want to have less, less luminosity in your ship perhaps i suppose uh, interesting interesting quirk and feature and yeah, here it's, it's just quite well rounded it has access to more gameplay loops than you'll get in any other starter you'll be able to carry other people oh nice yeah that is a lot of dead bodies here that's a lot you see that's a lot of money here because you're going to be able to sell all those armors to some armor shops you'll be able to carry a vehicle if you can oh Okay, so they can actually carry a rock. Well, it, it looks very cramped. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure the rock entirely fits in, but an STV would definitely, if a rock fills, then an STV would definitely go inside. Yeah, for sure. You'll be able to very easily get mission boxes in and out. You can do a little bit of bounty hunting if you're very careful. Yeah, yeah, very It makes careful. a very good explorer because it has very large fuel tanks compared to the other starter ships. <laughs> It's like we took a cutlass and made it tiny. Yeah, sometimes that's also another thing. Sometimes I take a, a starter ship to go from Microtech to another place just because I want to use a, the starter ship as a transfer. And then I cannot go the other way around because it's out of fuel, right? So if the cutlass, if the cutter, sorry, can do that, uh, then maybe doing a round trip is just instead of just of a one way. That's also a plus. The cutter is Drake's first foray in the starter ship. Right, well, that's the basically it with the cutter. Interesting ship. Uh, we still, I don't think we know the price yet 
of the cutter, at least at the time I'm making this video, but I would imagine it wouldn't be more expensive than $45. Uh, interesting investment. If you're looking for an LTI token, definitely. But if you're also looking for, as I said, you know, a starter ship to go from point A to point B because you're looking, f you're looking for just a vehicle that's just going to be acting as your vector to, to be transported from a place to another, then for sure, right? Anyway, that is all for today's video, guys. But let me know in the comment section down below, are you going to take a cutter? Uh, how are you going to take the cutter? How useful the cutter would be if it was the case? Well, if you subscribe to the channel and answer the question, then you get a, win to chance, you get a chance to win a uh, Spirit E1 with LTI. Also, feel free to be joining our video sharing contest or Discord where we're giving away another E1 Spirit. Also comes with LTI and Patreon and join members get auto maxi access. Guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, it's been the Eradicator. I'll see you guys later. All right. Uh, well, we only have two viewers, so I hope uh, if things were was working. Uh, if things were was working or were working, yes, I think that they were working. I guess um, I don't know. They are DGs online. He's got a lot of views here for the same type of content, perhaps. Anyway. Uh, I have a lot of things to do, so that's... Hey, Flyer, how's it going? <laughs> Flyer, I gotta go. <laughs> that's, well, it's the only... Uh, I need to I need to edit all of this, and I have another video to make. So that's really, really all the time that I had. I started my live stream a little bit earlier than I normally do. But, uh, yeah, I gotta go. Uh, so sorry about this, Flyer. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you so much for coming, guys. I'll see you guys next week. Cheers.